Hi guys, this is Graham again from Bainbridge Technologies. Um, today I'd like to just uh, quickly talk to you uh, about what we're doing uh, over the next 12 months or so with our lithium batteries. There's a few changes happening. Um, so over the next couple of weeks, um, what I'm gonna do is take a battery and each week I'll talk about a particular point about that battery um, and just some features and functions just to keep you guys up, up to date. So first and foremost, the slimline range of our lithium batteries, the 110 particularly, is the first one to uh, have a couple of little changes. So out of the box, the unveiling for the new 2022 version of the slimline, um, in, the, in the box obviously you get your uh, little pamphlet. Now it is quite important to utilize that. I have a lot of phone calls from people saying that there's nothing in there to tell them how about setting up the dials and so forth for the DC to DC model, which it purely, it, it is in, there's actually four pieces of paper in here, double-sided on here, it actually does tell you the settings and on the back of here, it tells you each individual position one to six uh, and what they do actually mean. Um, but the first point that I'm gonna talk about today is exactly that, is the DC to DC side of the battery. So anyway, out of the box, you do get the uh, instruction book and uh, some things on how to charge and discharge and so forth. Uh, a little point to remember. Um, you get the four aluminium universal mounting brackets as well, and the box. And the biggest change to the battery so far is its color, as you will see. So I'll just put that down on top of the box for now. So we've moved to a really nice satin black finish. Um, just finding, um, yeah, just, just makes things pop a little bit better with the, the labels and the stickers and the black. Some people have their batteries exposed and um, they, um, the black seems to fit in with the interior in the vehicles a little bit easier than say the blue did um, and so forth. So yeah, we've gone to the black so it's a little bit less um, in your face, so to speak, and blends in with a lot of uh, more interiors on vehicles and, and so forth. So, so the black uh, indicates that it definitely is a, a 222, um, 2022 version battery. Um, now with the DC to DC in these, we did um, update this battery uh, around about August of last year. And and um, as you guys would know, the DC to DC um, board did change in here. So today I'd just like to quickly talk about that. So on the board here, there's two dials. Now in the instruction book, it does have the dials um, pictured horizontally rather than vertical. So the one on the left is the uh, voltage settings and the one on the right is the display setting. So when you look at this orientation in here, it's actually that way round. So that one is your bottom one, which um, comes out, which is your voltage range, and then that's the delay. So out of the box, the bottom one is on position four, which means it turns on at 13.5 volts and off at 12.5 volts. The top one is, is on position zero, so there's no delay on that. So if you need to set this up for a vehicle, which 99% of the time this is the way you would install it, and to, to be honest, I tell everybody to install it, regardless of whether you've got a conventional older style alternator or a smart alternator, there are advantages to having it set up for the ignition feed. One in particular is I had a gentleman just before Christmas came in and thanked me for, for telling him to do it this way because he drove all the way back from, um, from Northern Territory and um, realised that when he got to around about Rockhampton that his alternator um, was still working but only just working. So it was around in the 12 volt range. So because I told him to run it off of the ignition scenario, his alternator was still supplying just enough current for the DC to DC in the battery to keep his fridge and freezer running. Otherwise he would have lost all his um, his frozen fish that he just spent the last few weeks catching up north. So um, so it does have its advantages. So with you go to the ignition mode, purely what it means is when your car is running, your charger is on. When your car is turned off, your charger is turned off. End of story, it will start charging. So it is important though that you change the dials to how I, I'm just about to tell you now, so that it does still do this. Because if you just put the banana plug, which is what this one is in here, into the little round port on the end, which I'll show you here. So if you put that in there and have that connected to 12 volts, Yes, that will turn it on and off with the ignition. But if you don't change that position four dial, even though you're driving, if the alternator turns off, which a lot of the smart alternators do uh, do so, especially the newer ones from like 220 onwards, they all drop below 12.5 volts. So if they do that, even with that ignition turned on, the charger 
will actually turn off. The charging circuit will turn off because it drops below that, that voltage. So it's really important that if you are going to set it up with the ignition feed mode, that the bottom dial on here, you turn down to zero. So it comes out of the box in position four, turn that down to zero, and the top dial, turn that up from zero up to six. That will put it in ignition override mode, and therefore then it will be perfectly set up for to turn on and off with the ignition. So it's, um, it's really important you do do that because yeah, we've had a lot of people uh, that have been a little confused and they just thought by putting the ignition feed into it um, that would be uh, the right way to go about it and quite, it's, it's not really. Um, so yeah, so follow, the, follow um, the directions in there clearly but as I said, just that's all you need to do. Um, we have had a few discussions and we are in, in talks about maybe changing it so out of the box it already comes preset for the ignition mode and then all you really have to do is put the, um, the banana plug in and connect it to power and away you go. So that may be the next update and we'll, uh, we'll let you know and keep you posted for sure anyway. So that's the first thing. So that's uh, what I'd like, you know, basically discuss this week was just to let you know about the changes to the battery. Um, and the importance of setting it up correctly for your vehicle. Um, as I said, if you honestly want to just set it up for an older vehicle, then yes, you could just do it straight out of the box um, and not have the ignition feed and, and that would be fine. But any vehicle basically from 2010 onwards, I would 100% set it up with the ignition feed set up and then you will never have any problems with it not turning on and charging and not charging whilst you're driving. Um, for long periods of time. So uh, that's uh, definitely the way to go. So hopefully that's giving you a little bit more of an insight uh, on how to set your ignition setup uh, and the charging setup for the uh, built-in DC to DC. And that goes for any of our lithium batteries with the DC to DC built-in, all operate the same way. So until next week, bye for now and we'll see you then.